to cut out the Heckles handbag today. Um, first is to print your pattern pieces. You want to save it to your computer and open it using Adobe Acrobat. Um, if you want to print only the pattern pieces, you will print pages 14 through 22. If you want to print the entire pattern, go ahead and do that. You want to make sure that the settings um, are at 100% or actual size when you print or else your pattern pieces will not be the right size. Um, and even if you don't want to print out all the pages, I recommend to print the front page while well, it's page two um, so that you can check off each of the pieces as you cut them because it lists it here by fabric type, exterior, contrast, lining, and then you can cut it out as you go. Um, okay, so I have all of my stuff ready. First, we're going to cut out the pattern pieces. And I don't usually make a video of this part, um, but I guess some people like to watch it, so I figured I would do this separate from the other video. Um, and actually, any straight edges, I'm going to cut with a rotary cutter. All right. And I still, obviously, I moved. This is my new house, my new sewing room. Um, I still haven't found like some of my scissors, some of my rotary cutters, so we're just going to use what we have. And I think I'm going to have to order replacements because I don't know. I don't know how long I want to keep looking for it. I'm sure as soon as I order more, I'll find them. So right now I'm just cutting right along the black lines. Um, I guess I tend to cut to the outside of the line. Technically, the measurement is to the center of the line. Um, and first, before cutting, you should measure your one inch test square on each page to make sure it is one inch exactly. Um, I know my patterns print correctly on my printer, so I don't measure them ever. Um, this ruler is from Mormino.com. She has all different sizes. This one is eight inches by 24 inches. And this is probably the ruler that I use the most. I have another one, I think it's 25 inch square, that is actually at my friend Brittany's house. Um, she lives a couple hours away from me and we've been meaning to meet up so I could get my ruler and so that we can hang out and that hasn't happened, so soon. Although it's winter too in Ohio, so that means a lot of snow. All right, so I don't know how much of this is worthwhile to watch. It'll probably be a long video because I'm slow. Or I'll speed some of it up. Um, I also would like to mention, I printed my pattern pieces out on cardstock. Um, and the reason I did that is that for one, they're more durable. For two, they're easier to cut around with a rotary, yeah, a rotary cutter. Um, so I like to do that. I just buy like the cheapest cardstock that they have at Walmart. I don't honestly know how much it is because the bag I have right now, I forgot, or the package, I forgot that I had it. Um, so I've had it for a long time found it moving and just now thought, oh, that'd be nice to cut my pattern pieces out of that for a change. I do want to make this video that I'm making now um, is going to be using the materials that are listed in the pattern. So we have a um, quilting cotton for the exterior and um, I'm using vinyl for the contrast, and then I'm using a waterproof canvas for the lining. So I do want to do a second video um, that's going to be a vinyl, like a vinyl I think for the exterior. I have some printed vinyl from Mormino, which is thinner. I think she, her printed vinyls are medium weight is what she calls it. Um, and I did make my first like test kind of of this bag out of that vinyl, but then I like my patterns to also be domestic friendly. So, and then um, also the pattern pieces. If you look at some of the 
exterior pieces. They have a dotted or a dashed line on them. And that is where you should cut your Decoville light. So um, you might want to print out a second set of those if this is a pattern that you plan to make frequently. So that way you can um, just cut cut the Decoville light exactly to size. I have a bad habit of cutting my Decoville hole and then trimming it, which is really actually very wasteful. And Decoville light's not really cheap, so it's probably not the best policy, but I also don't make my bags to sew. Um, and I don't get to sew as much as I used to anymore, so I don't know. If, definitely if I was sewing anytime really, you should want to keep the cost down, but. I feel like this might be quicker with scissors. I do want to show some, I think some people question when cutting with scissors, like, I don't know the best way to do it. And I don't really pay much attention to it or think about it that I kind of keep the scissors in one place and I move the paper. And I think I, somebody actually commented on that once, like that was helpful. I don't know. So there isn't really anything curvy about this bag. It's all straight lines. And then there are some pieces, not a ton, but um, some of the lining pieces and some of the contrast pieces that there are not actually pattern pieces for. Um, and you would measure them with a ruler and cut them out with a rotary cutter, or you could measure them out on paper, draw a square that size. Um, but it's basically the handle connectors handles, crossbody connector, side panel accent, adjustable crossbody strap, and then the zipper panels and zipper tab. Those things don't have a pattern piece, but um, the measurements are listed in a little chart here. So I always include that with my pattern pieces, and then the measurements are always, always listed on um, page two of the pattern as well. So I just cut this out roughly, keep it with my pattern pieces. Um, yeah, don't know what I was going to say. There's a zipper overlay, which has a nine inch opening. Um, so I know a lot of the different acrylic templates. Oh, I want that piece. A lot of the different acrylic templates have zipper overlay options available. Um, I have some from Carolina Little Stitches that actually have like the centerpiece, there are like little puzzle pieces to fit the ends onto the overlay template. I like to use that. Um, so if you have that, you know, use it. But obviously since this has an overlay, I wanted to include one with the pattern. Um, but any overlay that you have a, a template for or can cut out on your cutting machine, if you have like a Cricut or a Silhouette, go ahead and use that. Um, somebody, one of my testers, not two of my testers actually, um, Amber McLean, the Crafty Reporter, and Lauren Mormino both um, asked about putting pockets, side pockets on this bag, which is totally doable. I don't know if one of them will do it or not. I didn't add it to the pattern um, just because I like the clean look of it, but obviously you can add pockets to anything. So. If you want more pockets, go ahead and add them. This is going to be such a long video and it's only going to be cutting. Oh, and then fusing. I think I'll do all of the cutting and fusing in this video and then all of the assembly sewing in the next video. Um, this rotary cutter that I'm using is Kai brand and it kind of like the blade moves you can't cut yourself, I guess. I don't really like it for fabric, but it seems to be working pretty well for the paper. And I usually use my Fiskars cutter for this, but I don't know where it's at. Um, and I know some people don't like Decoville light. So if you don't like that, then you, you could use foam in this bag for sure. Um, I would keep it out of the seam allowance still. So I would probably use the dotted lines on the pattern pieces to cut the foam. Um, 
um, and the reason for the overlay. So I don't usually have overlay pockets in my patterns and I tested Laura Marmino's um, tailor tote recently. It wasn't that recent, but anyway, I tested it and it has the overlay and what an amazing place to use all these woven tags. So if you're part of the sewing blurbs um, subscription and you get those woven tags or like a lot of the different small shops, they have woven tags now. Mormino does, obviously that's where I get a lot of my everything. Um, and then Weft and Warp, they have some. Um, Carolina Little Stitches has some. Who else? Fabric Therapy. I, I don't know if they have tags, actually. I don't know. But anyway, using a different overlay gives you like one more place to like slide a little tag in. So I have Girl Math tags from Mormino. Um, one side says made with girl math and then the back side says it's practically it's practically free and I mean every single thing that's in this um, bag is from my stash like I didn't have to buy any of it new so it's like it's free so that was the perfect tag for that so I think anybody who's uh, doing stash busting that's a good tag for you unless you're Unless you're selling it. Well, and then maybe you can justify to your customer how it's practically free to them. Almost done. One more pattern piece to cut out. Well, and then the overlay. Uh, I posted like a short on YouTube and then I also posted to a reel on Instagram, a reel on Facebook, and then a video on TikTok of my new um, cutting table. So I've got like vinyl storage and fabric storage in the long sides of it and then the ends of it have pegboard um, for scissors, rotary cutters, my rollers, things like that. Um, so if you didn't see that, if you go check out any of those places and you can see that and I want to show off some more of the things that I did in my sewing room so this actually at some point was um, like an attached garage to the house and it was closed off before we bought it and it was actually one of the features that I liked best because I knew this could be my sewing room there's another like a barn separate so we still have a place to park our cars inside if we want to um, but yeah, I was just really excited to finally have space. So I've been kind of cramped up. I mean, and I should be, I'm grateful to have my own space anyway, but um, I couldn't believe that all the stuff I have in here, I had in my last room, except for some of the furniture and the size difference is just astronomical. So very excited to set this up. Um, a lot of my furniture came from Ikea. I've got uh, this table back here came from Ikea. And I got a second one of those, but without the drawers um, for my embroidery machines. And then I've got uh, some other of the drawer, Alex, I don't know what it's called. It's called the Alex drawers, I don't know, from Ikea that I got for, um, my template storage and then I have my hardware in it as well so I plan on showing more of that off on you know TikTok and reels and whatever just short videos um, I guess let me know if you want to see like a whole tour of my sewing room that I could do a whole YouTube video but it's still not quite finished yet um, for the zipper overlay the letter that matches up is in the center of this part that will get cut out um, so I think I might tape it together before I cut that. So, all right, so everything is cut. Let me get rid of this mess. Okay, so let's get started cutting. I'm just going to follow along with the cut list. 
um, page two. And then there's also a little blurb here about if you want to use quilting cotton for your lining or contrast or the different things that you should change if you want to use materials different than what is listed. All right, people are always asking me um, in my group and whatever, if, if I make this bag out of this material instead of this material, then what should I change? Um, a lot of it's personal preference, so I don't always know what would be best for you might not be what I would like. Um, some people like their bags to be more slouchy and then you might want to use less interfacing. Some people don't like Decoville light. So it's definitely a personal thing. And then, um, I don't know. I just also listed out like what I would, that's what I would use. So, all right, for the exterior, I'm using a quilting cotton. This is from So Dolce and I think it might actually be canvas. It's like thinner than like a waterproof canvas or something, but it's a little bit thicker than a regular cooking pan. So let's see, for the exterior, we have an exterior front. You know what, we probably have to tape our pattern pieces together first. So I like to use washi tape for this just because I'm a sucker for washi tape and I buy it all the time. And then like, I don't know what to use it for. So this is a good thing to use it for. So on my overlay, I just stuck a piece of tape on the bottom and I'm only gonna wrap it around the front a little bit there because I wanna be able to see that part that I need to cut out in the center. Um, when you are matching the pattern pieces up, I get asked this question a lot also, you butt the pieces together, nothing overlaps. So I like to literally stick a piece of tape like that and then I flip it over. And I guess you should probably do this the other way so you can see the letters matching up. Um, but you just match the two little black areas with the letters in them up and the pieces are butted together, nothing is overlapping. And then I always like to put tape on the front and back just so that it's nice and um, stable. All right, and then I'm also going to kind of separate these out so that I have all of my pocket or pieces that I need to cut out of the exterior fabric separated. There's not too much taping in this one. There's actually not that many pieces, I guess. All right, so here, if you wanted to do this right, I lay the tape so it's like this, half and half, and then flip it over so the sticky side is up, and then take the other half of your pattern piece with the same letter on it, and it just matches together right like that. The lines kind of go next to each other. Nothing is overlapping. And then I just fold the tape over. And one more. Um, you can use regular scotch tape for this. Masking tape, packing tape, whatever you have. So that's how I do that. Okay, so now we're going to cut these out. So first the exterior front. And I am going to try to, since this has like a very directional print, I'm going to kind of align these moths so that they're going straight in a line and not crooked. And then I want it to be right in the middle. So I make sure it's folded right in the middle. And then 
kind of decide where I guess I want them to be on the bag. Like, do I want two right on the front? I would cut it like that. Do I want one right in the center? I think. I think I'm gonna cut it right here. The bad thing about fussy cutting is that you will waste a little more fabric, but the good thing is that it looks nice. So, all right, this rotary cutter is an Ulfa. Um, I really like that. The mat that I have is called a big mat, cutting mat, and they recommended an Ulfa cutter because the blade is thinner and it will I guess do less damage to your mat or something. So I bought this rotary cutter on Amazon, I think for like 11 or $12 after I went to Joanne Fabrics to look for an Ulfa and they were all like 40 bucks. So definitely shop around if you want to get one. Um, so the exterior back bottom and top, um, I probably will want to kind of fussy cut this so that it doesn't look, you sew them together, like they get sewn together like this. Um, and there's a slip pocket there, so I don't want it to look like there's a gap, I guess, between the fabric. So, Cut out the exterior back bottom first. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then I want the top to kind of sew on and not look funny. I'm going to align with that. So I need to measure a half inch down. Yes. Let me think. One half inch. One half inch of this will be in the seam allowance and one half inch of the top part will be in the seam allowance. So a half inch down from the top of that is right to the top of those black parts. So then I need that to be where the seam line is. So I need to go a half inch down from that. I don't know if this makes any sense, but I think if I line it up right there, then I think it will fit together nice. Like I think that's like the perfect fussy cut. If it's not, then it's not a big deal. Okay. So we got our bottom, main, top. Okay, and this is where exterior front, exterior back bottom, exterior back top. I do also want to cut the adjustable crossbody strap out of this, which is four inches by 60 inches. So, um, yep, it's not going to be. If your fabric is not long enough for that, um, and we are going to fuse woven interfacing to this, so it doesn't matter really which way the stretch goes because you're going to have interfacing fused to it anyway. It won't be stretchy. But you can cut like two 30 inch pieces instead and then sew them together or cut it longer, however long you need. I'm going to cut mine however long this is because I should have cut it probably first. Um, I'm short though, so it's fine. All right, 
and this is four inches wide. And now let's cut the side pieces, side panels. I'm just going to trim off some of this messiness. And I forgot to look ahead of time to see um, what the fusing instructions were for the interfacing I'm going to use, which is Pixie Fuse Premium. Um, it's There's Pixie Fuse Lite, which is pretty much identical to Pellon Shapeflex um, SF101. It's 45 inches wide, the Pixie Fuse says, so it comes out to be a lot cheaper um, than the Shapeflex. And she has a Pixie Fuse Premium, which is more like a, a cotton woven fabric, more of a pre more like a premium fabric um, that has like a smooth glue on the back of it and I this this one's my favorite so that's what I'm using today that's what I honestly use most of the time Again, I'm just kind of folding directly down the center of these moths. one more um, and I'm just gonna kind of try to use this as a guide to make sure I cut this one like the same so that the two sides match so those are the things that I pay attention to when I'm cutting out something on a directional fabric like this so the very bottom of that is at the very bottom of one of the moths so something easy to line up And then when I cut the corners with the rotary cutter, I kind of cut into the pattern piece a little bit. All right, so that's all for my exterior pieces. I'm going to trim this up so that I can get this put away. Um, I keep my fabric storage is kind of rolled up on um, or folded up, whatever, on these comic book boards. And I get them from Etsy, or no, I bought them from Amazon like years ago, but um, I think this one's wider. So 
I just fold it so that it's like the right width to go around the board and then just kind of wrap it like this and that fits nicely in these cube shelves. I'm going to cut this little tail off. So my goal here is to stay organized and we'll see how long that actually lasts. All right, so next we cut all of the exterior pieces. So next is the contrast, um, which I chose this vinyl from Mormino. This is one of her Lux vinyls. Um, you wanna make sure that whatever contrast you choose is something that your sewing machine can handle. So the fabric that I called for for this is a vinyl leather or cork or something that doesn't fray because of the overlay. Um, you can use a cotton for it if you want, but not for the overlay. And you would wanna make sure that you interface it properly. Um, so we are going to cut out a bottom panel, which there are pattern pieces and then the measurements are also listed in the pattern. I don't list the measurements on the pattern pieces anymore because oftentimes people will take pictures of things with the pattern piece and then you're just giving the measurements away. So generally these pieces I will cut out with a ruler and rubbery cutter. So this is my bottom panel. Um, if you don't have an industrial machine, make sure that whatever vinyl you're using, your sewing machine can handle. So cork might be a better option for you. Um, Mormino does have, she call, what does she call them? Garment weight vinyls, I think, um, which are super lightweight and would definitely be domestic friendly. Um, some of these, I don't think this would be horrible on a domestic, depending on what you're doing. One of the parts you are sewing through like an overlay over top of um, a connector, that part's a little bit thick. So you may not want a super thick vinyl for that. Now I'm just gonna throw this in the trash. Four handle connectors, two handles. The handles are 18 inches long on this one, so I would I do want to make sure that I cut those before I don't have any like 18 inch long sections. Oh, which actually, this is an 18 inch vinyl roll, so I can cut it the length of the vinyl. So first I'm just going to cut this straight. And then cut two handles. They're one inch handles, so they're um, four inches wide. However wide you want your finished handles to be, you cut your material four inches, or four times that width. So if you wanted half inch, a half inch wide strip, strap, strap. Then you would cut a two inch wide piece of fabric. If you wanted um, three quarter inch strip, my goodness, a three quarter inch handle, then you would cut it um, three inches wide. So, yeah. Okay, so two handles. Four handle connectors, two crossbody connectors, two side panel, the side panel accent, that's the piece that is sewn over the connector on the end. Four handle connectors. Which way do I want to cut these? Oh, that's not long enough. Measure twice, cut once, right? I measure once and then cut it wrong. So don't do that.
And the handle connectors are one of the pieces that there are not pattern pieces for, but if you chose, you could just make a box, like even in um, Microsoft Word, you can make a box or you could draw it on with a pen and paper onto a piece of, or with a pen and a ruler and draw it onto a piece of paper and then have your own pattern piece for that. But I kind of think having a rotary cutter um, and a ruler is fairly common for bag makers. So I do always have like in 90% of my patterns, some pieces that don't have pattern pieces. And it's always these kind of pieces because it would be difficult. I think it would be harder to cut out. Um, I just messed up the edge of this. I would think it would be harder to cut out a handle with a long rectangle pattern piece than it would be just to measure it. Four handle connectors, two crossbody connectors. So this is the little connector on the side of the bag. This will be I can the for this if I can find it. This ruler is also from Mormino.com. If you couldn't tell since it matches the other one. And this one is um, eight inches by six inches, so. Side panel accent. Not two of those. Okay, and the zipper overlay. So, where did my overlay go? I'm gonna have to cut the center of this out. So I'm going to use the rotary cutter for most of it, and then scissors for the end, and that's the same way that I will cut it out of the vinyl. Um, I think you could also use probably like a an exacto knife, craft knife, to cut out the ends of these, and then also to cut your material, your vinyl or cork or whatever. Um, I generally just use scissors. All right, 
So this I'm going to cut on the back side so that I can actually draw part of the inside of the um, overlay here since part of it will have to be cut out with my scissors. And it would help if I didn't move it. Okay. I think I need to, Mormino also has like a three inch by, I don't know, something longer ruler. And I think I need one of those. And I don't know why I didn't buy one when I was there because I, I don't know. I feel like I was looking at it or, I don't know. Lauren, I need to order a ruler. Okay, so. Because sometimes this one's just too much. And I want a three inch wide one. And I'm just really paying close attention to make sure that it's lined up with that. Um, you could completely just trace around this whole thing and cut it all out with scissors. That's an option. I'm generally much straighter at cutting with a rotary cutter. somewhere where I'm not going to mess it up, hopefully. So here when I cut, I don't want to go past the edge because then I'll have cuts. So I just kind of get as close as I feel like I can to the end. Of the box without cutting through it at all. And then we'll just finish this off with scissors. My Kai scissors are my favorite um, for cutting things. They're really sh super sharp. But they are one of those things that I cannot find. And I feel like Probably no matter what, when you move, there's something that comes out missing, but why my good scissors out of all the things? Why was it my scissors? I am going to... All right, so, oh, there's our finished overlay. All right, I don't have much of this vinyl left. This is, um, this vinyl is from Mormino and it is, I think it's called Grape Crush or something, Grape something. And it's one of her Lux Glitter vinyls and it's just wonderful. Okay, I'm going to turn on my heat press um, to get warm. This heat press, the brand is HTV Rant. Um, and the tray kind of slides out. It's a little bit smaller than my old one, but it's pretty, so that's what's more important, right? So I just, I'm gonna let that heat up while I finish cutting, because then we'll have a lot of fusing to do, and um, the heat press really works better to fuse the Pixie Fuse Premium than an iron does, and I don't like to iron. Okay, so. Got all of the contrast pieces cut out. I'm going to cut the woven, fusible woven next. I think before the contrast or before the lining. Yeah. All 
All right, so see this is 45 inches wide compared to Pelon Shave Flex, which is only 20 inches wide. So it can be deceiving when a pattern says, um, you know, my patterns I listed out for Pelon, which is 20 inches wide. It might say that you need something um, like three or four yards of interfacing and you know that it's not that big of a bag and it, why does it take so much? Is that a typo? No, it's not a typo. It's only 20 inches wide. So you need more. Um, so if you have this, you're using not less, you're still using the same amount of interfacing, but it's not as much yardage. So just another thing. Um, let's see. So the woven is going to go on exterior front, exterior sides, exterior back bottom, exterior back top, and the adjustable crossbody strap. So let's see. How long did my, I don't even know how long my strap is since it's not actually 60 inches. It's not much longer than this fabric. So I'm just gonna cut a uh, four inch wide strip of this off first before I cut anything else. Oh, which is kind of silly actually because I already have so many chunks cut out of it. Um, and also Pixie Fuse does a few sales a year on, or oh, it's Royal Pixie Custom Fabrics is the name of the shop. They do a couple sales a year though on their Pixie Fuse um, and that's a good time to stop, stock up because it makes the price even less and it's already at regular price, I believe, cheaper than Joann's um, Shape X and it's a better product. And the person who owns the shop's name is Jennifer, so can you go wrong? I don't think so. No, oh, there's one complaint about having a white cutting mat is cutting the interfacing. I can't really see it through my ruler that well. pieces. The one nice thing is that I don't have to fussy cut anything now. So exterior back top, bottom, exterior front, and then the side. I don't know though if this piece is big enough for anything that I cut off. So I do save some of my scraps of this um, because like this might be too small for this but I can use it on a panel for a moon dance or not a moon dance. A midnight kiss pouch. So, save your scraps. To a point, I actually, that was another thing that I did moving. I kind of purged a lot because I had a bunch of stuff that I was saving that realistically I knew I was not ever gonna use. So I got rid of some, got rid of some things, lots of scraps. I could not part with all of my Tula Pink scraps though, which I have a lot of, um, because I've just been saving them for like years in all these collections. Oh wow, my heat press is already heated up. It's also much faster than my other one. So anyway, I have all of my tulip pink scraps, so. All right, so I'm just lining this up with the fold. Um, if you don't like cutting on the fold, then you can print two of the pattern pieces out and um, tape them together side by side and then you don't have folds. The main reason that my pattern pieces are on the fold is just so that there's less taping and printing to do. Um, if you buy templates from that template shop, they have, I think they have on the fold and um, full piece templates, so. Oh, and I was looking at something last night and I realized that in the year 2023, I only released three patterns, which makes me kind of sad. So my goal, my, my first goal, I guess my main easy to achieve goal, hopefully, 
is that I'll have more patterns than that in 2024. So I don't want to say a specific number. I have thoughts in my head, but I know it's not realistic for me. And I need to be realistic. I do still work full time outside of this. Um, and I like my job and I like where I work most of the time. So I don't see that changing. So I need to be realistic with what I expect for myself for this. Although I do enjoy doing it so it doesn't make it seem completely like work. Um, and since we're using waterproof canvas for the lining, that will not require any interfacing, which is why I like to use that. Which is honestly also why I like to use um, like vinyl for the exterior, because I really don't like cutting. So the more things that I can skip cutting out, the better. I just realized that this fabric will be perfect to use the wizardry fairy floss thread for. So that's going to be the plan for that. Okay, let me make sure I cut everything. Exterior front, two exterior sides, back bottom, back top, and cross back strap. So I pulled this out for the lining. This um, stuff. This waterproof canvas was from Glitterbug Fairy. Um, I think she had like a wall drop or something. I don't even know how this stuff is stuck on there. I can't get it out. Okay, she had like a wall drop. Um, and you got like a whole pack, I think, I don't remember if it was two, I think it was just one of each color that she has or something. I don't know, but I bought that. I don't know if one of these is enough so I'm going to make sure that I cut like the main pieces out first that I need so that then like the pockets, um, there's an interior zipper pocket and there's an interior slip pocket. If I cut something out of a different color, I'll have it be that, but I do only have one of this pink color. So we're going to cut the lining main. All right. I don't think I need any of these pieces. I don't for the lining. The lining main is a little bit weird looking and that's because this bag is assembled a little bit differently than other bags or than other bags I've made I guess. Wow that heat press is like heating up my room which is not a bad thing because it's freezing cold out and there's inches of snow all over my driveway. Well all over everything. And I was trying to get my son to wake up early and plow with the four-wheeler, and he would not. And then he thought he was going to plow now, and I told him he can't while I'm filming a video. So, Oh, do you notice how quiet it is? I'm trying to... I think the only thing we might hear out here is birds chirping. I'm like 20 minutes or so away from where I used to live. I don't know how many miles that is because I don't measure miles, I measure minutes. Um, but I'm like out in the country, I think. Maybe it's not quite out in the country for some people. I can still get to a different town in about 10 minutes, um, which I don't think is bad. And I really like it here, so it's nice. I like being away from people. I like the quiet. I don't mind my 20 minute drive to work every day. So, 
don't think it's for everybody. I know in the summertime we're definitely going to have a lot of yard work because we have more yard and we don't have a riding lawnmower yet so we have to get that sorted before summer comes but I figure we have time it's snowing right now that can't be our main concern. All right we've got two lining mains. I cut one bottom panel. Oh, I need the two X. I'm going to cut two lining tops because I want those to be pink for sure. And I chose my fabric colors to go with this out of the colors that were in the moths on the main exterior fabric. These lining top pieces are ever so slightly angled on the side, so there is no measurement listed for this because it's not just a rectangle. And I try to line up like a straight edge of the pattern piece with a straight edge on the fabric whenever I can so that I'm like cutting less um, sides. I don't like to cut like on that side, it's hard for me. So as you can see, I like lay my whole body across the table. Oh, and I forgot to look at the fusing instructions for the Pixie Fuse Premium. So we're just going to hope that my 320 degrees is sufficient. Um, let's see what else. Two, I need two exterior slip pockets. So these are the lining of the pocket that's on the back of the bag. I don't remember. I think they have a pattern piece. They do. Or you can cut it. The measurements are listed if you would rather measure and cut. Um, let me know too if you made it this far. Do you want me to do more cutting videos? It's not something I normally would do. And I don't do it for every pattern, but I felt like since I haven't had a video in so long, why not? So, let me know if you want more. Oh, zipper panels. I definitely want those to be pink as well, so. And the zipper panels on this are like kind of tiny. Um, the zipper tab, I think I'll also make sure it makes pink. by one and a quarter. Should probably cut that straight first. Will help me.
I think I just cut that one too long. I did. Okay, all right, I think we'll use this one for the slip pocket and the interior zipper pocket. I think that's a reminder that it's still on. Okay, so I guess for future, I don't need to preheat my that long. Um, you know what? I'm going to press, I'm going to fuse some of the exterior so that it has a chance to cool before I put the um, deco the light on it. So I'm just going to take the exterior fabric, I'm going to place it right side down and I'm going to give it like a quick press real quick just so that it's not um, all creased up how it was, and then place this on top. I'm pretty positive that you don't need water for the premium. So, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, we'll find out. I was going to look at the directions before I did this, and then I didn't. I think 320, we're going to try 320 at 10 seconds to see how that works. So. Well, I do that, I'm going to grab my deck of the light. And I have a whole roll of that. This seems okay. Um, also, I could, let me know if this like format for my videos works because the, the this video and the um, sewing video are going to be kind of set up differently than any that I've done before because I'm in a different space. So, I don't know, my old, I had um, a kind of a holder for my camera that would, had a magnet that would hook two metal plates I had on my ceiling. Well, the metal plates are still on my old ceiling once the new owners took it off. Um, so, I thought I'd try something different here since I actually have the room to use um, something to hold my camera. So, let me know what you think. Do you like my comfy chair back here? Which I can put in to write patterns and it's so nice and I have a TV so I can like watch a movie, write a pattern and not have anybody bother me. I'm gonna do that one for 20 seconds also.
have a, like a Teflon sheet that I should be putting over this and I'm not. So don't do what I do. Try to get that to um, okay, I'm gonna use the Teflon sheet now. Because I don't want this part to accidentally fold down. So the last two lining pieces that we have to cut. to me, but it was too pretty for me not to buy it, so that's why I own it. And I can thank my friend Cindy for that, because I enable her to buy things, and then she enables me to buy things. And I believe I'm the reason that she owns her Dookie um, 1181N, and she's the reason I own this heat press. And there are other things. I don't know what it is. I don't feel like I have enough time to cut anything. Seems to be a more firm waterproof canvas than the other one. I cut the interior slip pockets and then the interior zipper pocket. Alright, so I actually love this heat press now because if I'm not over there when it goes off, it doesn't matter because it's not going to keep on heating. It lifts up. So that's pretty amazing. It's just small. Um, I guess if it was like a little bit wider, that would probably be nice. And I don't know how long with that the raising mechanism, how long will that last, but we'll worry about that later because it's pretty. are cut now.
card that's not going to be interfaced. All right, last thing to cut, Decoville Light and Decoville Heavy. We're going to cut Decoville Heavy first. This is all the Decoville Heavy I have left, so I'm going to have to buy more. And I think what I'm going to do is just cut my pattern pieces on that dashed line. I would normally cut them out and then trim off the excess. Um, which I usually just do half an inch. This time I did just a touch more than half an inch because I noticed that sometimes the Decoville Heavy, Decoville Light, whatever, it will get caught in the seam allowance anyway when I'm sewing. And then it kind of doesn't turn out as nice. I don't want it to be in the seam allowance at all. So this is actually um, more than half an inch. that it's gonna be out of the seam allowance. A little bit more than half an inch, whatever. Yes, whatever. Heat press to fuse. Where's my bottom contrast at? I use my heat press also to fuse my deco wheel. That's where it's beneficial to use the pattern pieces and not try to measure because measure once, cut once is not a good policy. seconds. trim each of these pieces down and then when I make the next one I'll have to reprint some of these pieces so that I have them without um, the trim whatever I have the full pieces
this out of the way. These are all of the pieces that we need to cut out of Deco Bell White. It's nice that Deco Bell is not directional at all, or not, it's not woven, so you don't have to like fold it on the grain or anything like that. This can also be traced onto the wrong side or whatever side, but it can also be traced onto the deco bell and then you cut it out with scissors. Um, you can do your main pieces like that too. You can trace it on to the hmm, either side really because it's going to all be, the edges will all be within the seam allowance.
exterior back top. We're so close. All right, again, if you don't like the cocoa light, you can use foam, but keep it out of the seam allowance still. So. All right, so we're gonna use the rest of these. That's it. We can cut our zippers, I guess, real quick. Um, so you use two sections of zipper tape. They are 19 inches for the main closure, which I really thought I'd change that to 18, but 19 and 10. You can cut them longer and then trim them down if it helps you. Put the zipper fold on them in the sewing video. Okay. So I think that's it. Everything is cut, everything is fused, and we'll go ahead and start sewing. So catch me in the next video.